Hello everyone, welcome back to today's class. So today I'm talking about the seed. It's in continuation with my previous class, the fruit, and also previous to that previous class, that is the flower, uh, root, stem, uh, then leaf, uh, floral formula diagram, flower. Okay, in fluorescence. Today, this uh, the seed part is the last part of morphology of flowering plants. Uh, please go back. Uh, please go through all the uh, classes of morphology of flowering plants to get the proper. Uh, knowledge about the entire chapter okay so let's move on to today's class of the seed now how is the seed form see in the plant there's a ov ovary part remember the ovary it forms the fruit and the ovules that are present inside the ovary it forms the seed part okay so in this diagram you can see here the ovules part ovules that are present inside the ovary see this ovules they take the form of the seed part Okay, so basically seed is composed of three things. What are the three things? First is seed coat, then is the endosperm, and then is the embryo. So remember, seed is composed of three things, seed coat, endosperm, and embryo. Now, what is the composition of seed? So you have seen the diagram of ov ovule, right? How the uh, ovule shape is. So that ovule shape, when it takes the form of the seed, so seed, it forms a seed coat. So seed coat has two layers, outer layer and inner layer. Okay, outer layer is known as testa and the inner layer is known as the tegmen. Okay, after that we come to the integument part. You have seen in the ovule, the diagram is given here for your reference. So you have seen that in an ovule, a part known as integument is present. Okay, and also there is a small opening known as the micropyle. So similarly in seed, there, the, the, there is an opening uh, with the integument known as the micropyle. So in some seeds, this micropyle it can be seen. Okay, there's also a part known as helum. Helum is just like a navel. Remember, in human body, in the stomach we have navel. Similarly, there's a small, uh, uh, small opening like structure, or you can say small, uh, yeah, opening like structure known as helum in the seed part. Okay, in some seeds, this micropyle and seeds helum it is present. Okay, now we'll come to the endosperm. Endosperm, what is endosperm? Okay, <clears throat> endosperm is basically the food part, or you can say it's a part which provides a food to a growing embryo. Okay. So remember endosperm, it contains uh, the food part of the seed. Next, we come to the embryo. So embryo, again, it's, it is it consists of many other parts. In them. That is the epicotylus day, hypocotylus day, radical cotyledons. So just remember the names in this slide. We'll talk about these things more. Okay. Now, seeds are of two types, monocot seeds and dicot seeds okay so first we'll talk about the monocot seeds so look if you look into the diagram you can see out here <clears throat> so this is one see monocot seeds basically they are generally they're endospermous that means they contain endosperm but sometimes what happens there is no endosperm present in some plants it's an exception okay so my examples are orchids in orchids there is no endosperm so they are known as non endospermous okay and another crops such as maize corn it is all endospermous because they contain endosperm now see here the endosperm is cons consisting of an entire part okay it contains the fleshy or food part which provides food to the growing seed now there is a seed coat present and a layer known as alluren layer okay this alluren layer is a layer that uh, separates the seed coat from the endosperm part okay so alluren layer as i have already told to you alluren layer it provides nourish it nourishes the embryo remember it provides nourishment to the embryo and so don't confuse it with the endosperm remember endosperm what does it do it provides food to the uh, seed in the form of the in form of starch okay so also sometimes other components may also be in the form of other components it may also provide food so remember endosperm provides food okay to the Seed and alluren layer, it provides nourishment to the embryo, remember. And alluren layer, it, it separates the endosperm from the seed coat, the uh, outer part, okay. It's also, alluren layer is also the, uh, you can say the outermost part of, outermost layer of the endosperm, okay. Now, <clears throat> if you look down, you can see here scut scutellum, okay. So, scutellum is basically, it's a cotyledon, okay. It's basically cotyledon, also other name for cotyledon. And then you come to the lower part, you can see, uh, Coleptile and coloriza. So remember, coleptile and coloriza, these two are the sheets. Okay. So coleptile sheet, it is a sheet that is 
covering the plumule part and the coloriza is a sheet that is covering the radical part okay these two are the sheets now uh, for better uh, understanding i've given another diagram out here so this see this part it forms the embryo okay so cotyledon epicotyl okay epicotyl what is it it forms the shoot part remember okay and hypocotyl it forms the root part so remember that okay now generally monocotyl as i've already told you these things so it is normally endospermous remember that now moving on to our dicot seed in dicot seed again you can see here so cotyledons are basically fleshy and out here they reserve food so remember that dicot seeds they are generally non endospermous because they do not contain endosperm out here the cotyledons it provides them uh, the food okay it reserves the food it provides them the food the seed to, to the seed and <clears throat> again there is an example there is an exception or in dicot seed like for castor so castor it is having endosperm because um, because of a process known as double fertilization okay so because of double fertilization as it's occurring in the in castor so castor becomes endospermous so this is an exception remember that okay so <clears throat> now what are the other examples of dicot seeds so examples of dicot seeds i've given here bean gram pea so they do not have any endosperm so they are known as non endospermous remember now if you see out here what are the parts of dicot seed so as i've already said to you helium is present okay <clears throat> micropyle is present and uh, testa and tegment i've already told you the outer innermost part then cotyledon is provide is providing the food portion to the seed okay and now you can see one embryo out here. you can see this one more thing out here that embryo it contains <clears throat> an embryonal axis remember there's an axis and on the other on the other side of the axis there are two cotyledons are present remember that so lower part it forms the root radical and the upper part it forms the shoot part that is the plumule okay so see out here another example out here you can see see this one helium okay and micropyle so basically micropyle you can see <coughs> okay the shoot rising out here fine <coughs> so this is all about your dicot seed and so the class ends here with questions so please to solve the questions and see if you have any doubts so if you like the class do like uh press on the like icon share it with your friends and please to subscribe to my channel for more such videos so therefore morphology of learning plants the entire chapter ends in today's class okay thank you so much for attending today's class i hope you have liked it so uh take care bye bye